Keeping venomous reptiles is an unforgiving hobby, requiring proper training and lots of experience. One simple mistake can be the difference between life and death. death, death. Remember, the most venomous snake in the world oh, is the whoa. one that just bit you. There are no venomous snakes with training wheels. Just because you see Viper Keeper handle snakes a certain way does not mean you should try it too. Well, unfortunately, these ringed water cobra babies that I moved from the bins over to here some weeks ago uh, are just not feeding. They've just got totally butt hurt and refused to feed, so uh, in an effort to save them, I'm going to move them back into bins. Um, and of course, that's always very interesting because these are like grease lightning. We'll see how well this one behaves. So far, so good. I'm wearing a glove because not that this would protect me against snakes with very long fangs, but these water culvers have very short fangs right now. Um, and I could easily grab and manipulate. Go in here, hut. There you go and be able to deal with them in a reasonable manner. So, I'm not going to even attempt to feed them this week. Hopefully they'll last for another week. So, I'll put them back uh, in there. That's number four. This one is yet unoccupied. I wanted to not put any water in there. <laughs> uh, because things have a tendency to get sloshed around sometimes. So let's go get the other one. Now this other one seems to be right here in front of the cage. So this Shed. Should we put you in a box with some water first? I think we should probably do that. Um, now that I have a handful of water cobra, it makes it a little bit difficult. So, Lori, would you uh, grab that box up there, put some uh, room temperature water in it? So we're just going to leave them alone, or it alone for the time being, um, because it is a very unhappy camper right now, but at least uh, we'll be able to get the shedding off, uh, and I'll probably tube it before I put it in there, and make sure that it's got a clean start, we'll see. Let's 
just go for broke here. These things are like greased lightning when they want to be. Come on, you're a water culver, I can see that. Come on. Can we get you to put your head in the tube? Huh? Oh, I know this is this is a real insult. Now, I've learned from experience water culvers are really tricky customers to hold because of their scales are so slick so they go through the water. Are you going to poop on me too, huh? You're looking pretty slender. And I like to wrap you up so they can get some pull on your skin. Come on. I know, I know, I'm watching your little head. Grab the midsection. Oh, you have to wrap your little tail around. <laughs> He's trying to tie a knot. This was supposed to be a female, but to me it looked like a male. Okay, so you're really unhappy right now, but I can understand that. Now, I'm not going to be dumb enough to stick my fingers over there because uh, the, Lori and I were working here in the lair on, on peeling a water culvert one time and it got its head on my finger and stuck my finger with a uh, fang. Fortunately, I believe I had depressed the actual venom duct where my finger was. Okay, I'm not going to play with that any further. I can only do more damage. Now, what are Culbra's uh, according to Brian Fry, who did this very elegant paper, oh, he pooped in the dish too. Water culbras um, aren't your big threat display culbras. They have small hoods and a cryptic pattern. Unlike your monocle culbras, your Indian culbras, which put up this big di display, I'm big, I am bad, uh, they've got Defensive venom, which is loaded with cytotoxics, which cause a lot of pain. So they want you to remember not to screw around with them again. In Brian's very elegant paper and with his team, he described that this is a fine example, the water culbras, of a purely neurotoxic venom which doesn't have any cytotoxic components that they could find in the specimens that they examine their venom um, nor uh, did it have any necrotizing uh, portions in the venom to cause any major tissue damage so these are sort of close to purely postsynaptic neurotoxic snakes so now that I've got this in my little hands uh, I am going He's to try. Got you too. I am going to try to uh, get it into the bin without playing snake hockey. It's always the release that's the tricky part. Hmm. That's what Jim uh, Harrison <laughs> tells me, and I, I believe with believe him completely. It's it's not the pinning, it's the releasing. Okay, so uh, let's move on to uh, changing some water dishes and such.
Well, earlier in the week, uh, Lori and I did a video of me moving these ringed water culbras that I got basically, a year, well, a year and three months ago. And they've been doing really well eating pink mice right out of the water dish and, and stuff. And they sort of outgrew these bins. Uh, they were in the small bins across the way. I moved them over here. Uh, they were eating like champs uh, all the time. I moved them to those big vision cages, uh, just like uh, the one Mr. Barnetti's in here. It's uh, 28 deep, uh, uh, 20 wide and 14 high. Uh, made a very nice enclosure for them. Um, they absolutely wouldn't eat. So, you know, Lori and I moved them over and last night I put five pink mice in their water dish and they're all gone this morning. Uh, um, snakes just don't like change. Um, they get easily butt hurt and uh, this is a fine example. Um, you know, I, I don't know what to do with them next because they're if they've already outgrown this, uh, um, it'll be interesting when they get even bigger.